everyone, it's Sarah, and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video is step number one in our crochet along called Fanny Packs Are Back. Now, if you're not into fanny packs, that is certainly okay. This bag also makes a nice shoulder bag. So this can be a shoulder bag or a fanny pack. And what we're going to do is we're going to have five steps. They're all going to be video and written and pictures. And you'll be able to find the link for the written and the photographs underneath this video. And what we're going to do is for five days, we're going to have five different steps that you can do. And by the end of the fifth day or the fifth video, you'll have a wonderful and cute fanny pack or shoulder bag that you can use. I love this bag because we're going to be putting on the sides, so it's going to have a little bit of depth. Now the bag itself measures about six inches long. It's about 11 inches across and about two inches deep. So it's a nice size bag to use as a fanny pack or that shoulder bag. To make your fanny pack or shoulder bag, you're going to need some yarn, of course, and you're going to need approximately two and a half ounces total. Now this one is done in two different colors. It is done in cotton, and you can do your bag in cotton. And the one we're going to do for the demonstration is going to be done with Karen Cakes. The main thing that you need to know is that it needs to be a medium number four weight yarn. You can use cotton, a cotton blend, or just some regular acrylic yarn that you might have on hand. Now the Karen Cotton Cakes is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. So you see there's lots of different options in yarn choices. You can do solids and you can see this one is an ombre that I'm going to do today. And um, for our whole demonstration, I'll be doing just the Karen Cake in this ombre color, which is called Fairy Cake. But you can use two different colors. You can use three or however many colors that you want to. And like I said, different fibers are fine as long as it's a medium number four weight yarn. You're going to need two D rings and these are one inch D rings. And you'll need those two D rings in order to attach your strap together at the top and make it adjustable. You're going to need two buttons. I'm gonna be using these fun little buttons. On this bag, I used two flower buttons. The size of the button needs to be about one to two inches, depending on how big you make your loop. I'm using a little bit bigger buttons because I think it would be fun to have a nice big button in the center of my flower. So one to two inch buttons and you need two, one for your loop and one for your flower. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook, and then you'll need a needle to weave in those ends. For step one, we're going to begin working on the body of the bag. We're going to begin with a slip knot, and we're going to chain 29 chains. And I want to remind you to stitch this beginning chain just a little bit loose so the top of it doesn't have a pucker edge. I've stitched my 29 chains and we're going to begin in the second chain from the hook and stitch a half double crochet. Yarn over, go in the second chain, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all three of those loops. And we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each of the chains across. one half double crochet in each of those chains across.
I have stitched one half double crochet in each of those chains across and you should have 28 half double crochets because we began in the second chain from the hook. We're going to chain one and turn. Now the chain one does not count as a stitch and so we're going to begin our first stitch in the first stitch. <laughs> and we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each of those 28 half double crochets across. And the body of the bag or the purse is all stitched in half double crochets. It's a nice compact stitch that works great for bags and purses. So one half double crochet in each of the half double crochets across. I stitched one half double crochet in each of those half double crochets across and it's a good idea to go ahead and take a look and make sure that you didn't stitch that beginning chain too tightly and it's pulling in. We don't want that. We want it to lay nice and flat and that's why I said to make sure that you stitch that beginning chain just a little bit looser. If you struggle with that, we're stitching our whole project in an H. But if you want to do that beginning chain in an I, which is a 5.5 instead of a 5, just that beginning chain, it'll help it loosen up a little bit. Just a tip that I've learned because a lot of people stitch quite a bit tighter than I do. All right, so I have another row of half double crochets. We have 28 half double crochets for row two. And we're going to chain one and turn. And now what we're going to do to finish up step one is we're going to repeat row two for 26 more rows to create the body of our bag. So we'll repeat row two, which is one half double crochet in each half double crochet across, chain one, and turn. And we'll repeat that for 26 more rows. I have completed those 26 additional rows and when you get those 26 additional rows done, you'll have 28 rows because we already did row 1 and 2. And this is the body portion of our bag. Now when you get to the end, don't cut your yarn off because we're going to be doing the flat portion of our yarn next. So for step one, we did the body portion of our bag, which is this particular section here. For step two, we're going to be doing the flap rounded section here. We'll be doing decreased stitches to form the curved edge. And so that will be the next step, step two on our crochet along. <music>